All right. A big pick for the New Orleans Saints last night, Devin. They get your guy, Cesare Ruiz, the interior lineman from Michigan. You know, last week you really changed my mind about it in the pick. And you had him going 25 to Minnesota. I was like, man, maybe that's too early for this guy. And then a couple of my Saints sources in the past week have been like, hey, man, we're, home, we're texting this guy. And then earlier this week, I had to send you a text like, yeah, man, I think the Saints are going to take you, boy. Yeah, uh, I know that when we initially talked the first time about who the Saints would draft, I did bring up Cesar Ruiz's name. Uh, that was mainly because I thought the Saints might not resign and just speak, but they still ended up going with Cesar Ruiz. Um, and I know a lot of Saints fans' instant reaction was like, why don't we pass Patrick Queen? You know, why don't we do that? But if you think about it, the Saints' biggest problem against Vikings, Vikings uh, yeah. against Rams, against uh, teams high caliber is the interior rush. I mean, we have mm -hmm. two of the best tackles in the NFL, uh, and Brian Ramsey and Teron Armstead. Uh, we got uh, Eric McCoy that came in immediately, was a immediate upgrade at center. Um, so now the Saints need to strip the inside of their offensive line. And to me, they, they still have the ability to trade up into the second round to still get a linebacker or other positions of need or wait to the third round. And with teams reaching on so many players in the first round, yeah. there's still a lot of players left that the Saints can potentially go ahead and come back up and trade up for. Um so for to me for the Saints, uh, it was about getting the best player of value. Uh, and granted, Patrick Queen was on the board. Um, the Saints it wasn't were, their guy. Yeah, the, the Saints can still live with not having, not getting a linebacker. It's not really the biggest position of need in terms of the Brees, and That and then Drew Brees, he's entering one of his last seasons in NFL. So we need to go all in and get someone that can immediately contribute from day one and uh, immediately affect the outcome of games so that, you know, Drew Brees has time to throw. Because we all know Drew Brees struggles the most when he uh, gets the interior rush and then he makes bad decisions or balls get tipped, stuff like that. No doubt, Devin. Um, let's talk about your guy, Ruiz, a little bit. He's, what, 6'4", 307 pounds. He was an all Amer all Big Ten, second team and third team the last two years. You've covered the Big Ten last year. Really, just tell me about some of this guy's strengths and weaknesses. Uh, definitely strengths is uh, getting out and pulling. Uh, that's something he excels at, uh, at the center position, nonetheless. Uh, at guard, I mean, he can do the same thing as well. He moves people. He, he keeps a clean pocket. Uh, I believe that he only allowed maybe one or two sacks. Someone put up the stats last night. He's he's allowed very little sacks in his uh, NFL uh, his college career, um, and he's someone that that once he gets moving, there's no stopping him. Like imagine uh, hypothetically, Saints love the run screens. Imagine uh, Eric McCoy, Caesar Ruiz, and Ryan Rancho running out in front of uh, Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, mm -hmm. or uh, Deontay Harris. Like, imagine that. Just imagine that type of scene. Uh, he provides so much flexibility in the interior because, say something happens to Eric McCoy, you can move Ruiz back to center because that's his <laughs> natural position. But he can play either guard spot. Uh, his footwork is phenomenal. I think he's someone that a lot of people didn't talk about, you know, really in the pre-draft process because they they didn't – you don't really focus on – to line outside of tackles, really. But it's definitely a position need. Uh, some of his weaknesses, I don't see many weaknesses with him. You know, he's, he's a strong overall player. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, learning the guard position is going to be uh, a challenge. But, you know, Sean Pei said last night that he is expecting him to come in and compete. And yeah. Uh, Larry, 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 yeah, Larry Warford, he's not going to have the position right out. He's going to battle him. And in my opinion, I think Ruiz will edge him at some point. Um, and we could potentially trade Warford to save eight point five million in cap space. So, yeah. um, to me, this is this is always an intriguing pick. I knew, I had a feeling that the Saints might go him, but I didn't I didn't want to commit to it because I didn't think they would go ahead and go for it. But like uh, initially, even like some of my earlier mock drafts, I had him going to the Saints uh, just off based based off me liking him so much. But uh, I finally committed to him. 
last night right before the draft. I was like, ah, man, are they going to take him? Because I saw the video of him dancing to in a locker room, and it was like, I bet you won't. And he was like, I was like, yeah, he's a saint. Well, I saw that he posted the, like, draft day video from outside his house, and I jokingly tweeted, like, Saints draft this, man. I, I didn't think they were going to draft him, but then he did. I didn't realize I, dra- I tweeted that until, a, like, a friend of mine replied back to it and said that, you know, I saw before coming. But, like you said, you told me that he would go there. Uh, I mean, I still was a little skeptical, but, you know, when, when I saw the – you know, the decision to pick them out, I was excited. Um, I think that, you know, for Saints fans out there that are a little skeptical about the pick and wondering why we didn't get Patrick Queen, um, it, it's all about trying to maximize Dupree's potential and then really going forward because even the next quarterback that who, whoever the Saints are going to have at, at the helm after Dupree's is gone, they're going to have a strong <laughs> offensive line. And the Saints can reestablish the run game. That's another big thing that Ruiz, like, you know, he, he's a phenomenal run blocker. Like I said, he can pull out on the edge, double team, get to the next level. Um, you know, it, for the Saints fans that, that are wondering about him, look up the Michigan and North Dame game. Mm-hmm. That game, he completely dominated. Um, and I, I mean, I, I posted a video of highlights for back in, I think it was in October, but he literally is the epitome of what the Saints need. You know, they, they need any offensive lineman. They, the, big, the biggest thing about the Saints is that they love versatility, right? Mm-hmm. So Pete was able to kick out to, to tackle with bombs that went down, you know, or either guard position. And now with Ruiz, that they have so much different options they can go with. I mean, they could move Eric McCoy out to guard and have Ruiz. Yeah, center. yeah playing center. And you talked about that Vikings game. You saw both Pete and Wolford really get exposed a little bit, and Breeze got a lot of pressure. And you saw teams like the 49ers who maybe didn't have the best skilled players but went to the Super Bowl because of their offense and defensive lines. And for me, the Saints never picked the most popular pick. Kamara wasn't a popular pick when he got picked. Ramchek wasn't a popular pick when he got picked. But they were the right picks. And I trust Mickey Loomis. I trust Jeff Ireland and the Saints staff on what they're picking. And I'm excited to see what they do today. I, I think they're going to be aggressive. The Saints always go in the second, third round and go get their guy, somebody who they think can come and contribute. Yeah, uh, a, name, a couple of names for me to look out for. Uh, Malik Harrison, linebacker out of Ohio State. Uh, the Saints are still looking for a linebacker. Um, you still got you got King Davis Gaither from Appalachian State. He's a very intriguing prospect that people really don't know where he's going to go, but he will go at, at some point on the second or third round. Uh, those are two linebacker prospects that the, the Saints definitely need to look into if they aren't already. Um, Jeremy Chin. Jeremy Chin as well. Um, and Winfield Jr., if they can get him, of course. Um, but, so there's so many different things that the Saints can do on, on this day, too. Uh, obviously, they're going to need, for those last two guys, they're going to need a trade up a little bit higher to mm-hmm. get them because they're they're projected to go somewhere early in the second round. Um, but I think, uh, for me, Anton Winfield Jr. would be the most intriguing because he has the ability to play so many different positions. He can play slot corner, in-the-box safety, free safety, whatever you need him to. That's another type of versatility player that the Saints... There's that play in the NFL, too. So he's got that pedigree the Saints always like. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see what the Saints do. Uh, they always come with the... the uh, honestly, they're probably one of the best teams picking day two, day three guys because they always get the most uh, out of their players. I mean, Kamara, what? That they day two guy. Someone that Saints expect to get. Uh, Tom, so day two guy. Von Bell, I mean, two guy. Marcus Colston, three picks from being the last selection. Michael, yeah. Michael Thomas, a second round pick. I mean, you, you think about the pedigree that the Saints have in drafted players. Uh, I think it, it doesn't need to be overstated how well their management goes about drafting players and putting them in the best positions to succeed. I mean, we've had a couple picks they bombed, of course, but generally speaking, they get the most other players when they draft them. All right, Devin. Well, thank you for coming on today. I'm sure we're going to be texting back and forth when the Saints do select at 88 or if they trade up. 
Yes, sir.